uh, I think one thing about uh, one he- one thing about heaven, I because everything's going to be there and will be perfect. One of the great things about heaven is going to be that we'll finally be able to have words to tell God how thankful that we are. Because we don't have those words right now. All the, all the, I mean, you know, and and it's funny because, you know, we, we profess love one to another and, you know, whether you're husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, or you just have, there's, you know, there's so many different kinds of love, but, you know, and we try to do our best to convey that love uh, in every way that we can imagine, but the one thing that we can't come up with is the words to say to God on how much he's loved us and and how and how thankful that we are for that and and I just I just can't that's going to be a great thing about heaven is I'll finally be able to tell God what I've always not been able to tell him and so and it's going to be that much sweeter because I'll get to tell him face to face Instead of just in prayer or, you know, uh, it's just going to be a face-to-face thing. And that's an important, very important thing uh, that we need to remember uh, as we're going forward is the fact that we will see God face-to-face. He is alive. He is very well. Better than ever. And uh, he's victorious over all these things. And so uh, I'd like us, if you would please, to take your Bibles. And we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 if you have it. If you don't have it with you, don't feel too bad. Uh, It will be up on the screen for you. We're just going to begin reading in verse 12, and, uh, and then we'll go, we'll go from there. <clears throat> Bible says, Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our pre- then is our preaching vain, and your faith is vain, also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we've testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if, ye, and if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, Ye are yet in your sins, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perish. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of uh, most of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as uh, in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. And when all things are, shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all 
and all. Now I want to uh, I want to preach this morning on where victory began. Where victory began. Everything's got a beginning. So where did victory happen? Because you know what? Uh, you know, death, sin entered into the world pretty early on in the world's <laughs> formation. You know, you had two people and they, they couldn't get it right. <laughs> uh, so death passed upon all, all men. And, and so now that set, that set up this whole thing. And so now uh, the re whole reason Jesus came was that we would not end up in that place called hell that was made for the devil and those that followed him. And so, by my one man, sin entered the world and died by sin. And then we have Jesus coming. And in it, that's why it was so significant that God became human body. And in the flesh, as we are, remained sinless and was able to go to the cross that we've been singing about all morning. And then uh, be placed in that tomb and... That, you know, that was, that was really great. You know, the best part about that whole thing, it was a borrowed tomb. They could just sweep it out and reuse it. You know, that was, a, that he, did, he was only there three days. So, I mean, you know, uh, it was just, it, 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 that's just how it is. But we see that victory happened at the resurrection. That's when all things began to have hope. See, the one thing that we need in this world is hope. One, the, the reason people take their lives and, 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 and destroy their lives, they think that there's no hope for their situation. They think there's no hope for them. They think there's no hope and no purpose, and so they, they come up with this plan. But I want you to understand, today there is hope in Christ Jesus. There is hope. There is hope. There is purpose. There is all these things that God has prepared for each and every one. And so uh, I wanted to preach where victory began. So it begins at the resurrection. And a little, a little statement God brought to my mind was that our victory starts where God's did. And that's where God's victory happened. We have the cross, and that's when the world thought they had the victory while he was on the cross. While he was dead, they put a spear in him. Out forth came blood and water. Gave it all on the cross. They thought they won, but they didn't. They fulfilled prophecy is what they did. They fulfilled prophecy. And he rose again on that third day. Day. I am so just overwhelmed by, by that. And to know that because he lives, I live too. Amen. Because he rose, I will be raised up. Because our hope is planted in Christ Jesus. That's where it's all at. Uh, and so... We want to talk about this uh, for, for a minute. And God's victory, and, the, and just remember now that a lot of the, the, these victories that God had is the same victories that we will have. And then we have some that are separate, that are our own, that God gives us. But uh, uh, we'll go over, um, it's in the same chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54 and 55 so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall, it, uh, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Listen here, before we go just to the next verse, we have, first of all, victory over death. Victory over death, because a Christian doesn't really die. Death is not what you think it might be. A Christian is always referred to as someone who is asleep 
in Jesus. Think about that for a minute. That's not, a, and we, you know, we, we know that death is, uh, is a separation from the soul, from the body, and that soul has got to be somewhere, just like it hung out in you the, all your whole life. It, the soul never dies. No one actually ever di it, it dies except for what is said about those that end up in that terrible lake of fire, which is the second death. There's a death that, is, that separates our soul from our body, and it's got to have somewhere to be. And so if it's not in your body, it's not going to be floating around waiting. It's not, it's not a ghost. It doesn't float around and come through walls and grab your feet at night and all that different stuff. It doesn't do that, okay? There's two places that the Bible teaches us, and there's that place called heaven, absent from the body, present with the Lord, or the rich man died and was buried, and in eyes lift up his, in, 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 he was buried, and in hell lift up his eyes in torment, in Luke chapter 16. Those are the two places that you get to be, and it's a everlasting because your soul is an everlasting thing. It cannot, you, the real you can never really die. It's made eternal because it was blown, uh, how man was created. And I'm not going to take a lot of time to go back to, to Genesis, but it, when, in Genesis 2 7, when it talked about God blowing uh, the breath of life in man becoming a living, in the nostrils, and man became a living soul, that was eternal breath. That was eternal breath that came from an eternal God. So anything he blows on, it's, it's going to be forever. He made a forever soul. And so that's, that's what we need to understand. It's got to be somewhere. And our body is just a temporary holding ground to figure out where it's going to spend the longevity of it. Okay? Okay. So we have however many years we have in this body, in this life, to make a choice about where we're going to hear about Jesus, to make a choice, am I going to accept this or am I going to reject this? Am I going to believe? Am I not going to believe? And what's going to happen there? So that's going to set up. Your whole time here is preparing you for a forever someplace. That's what we all need to understand. Okay, but we have victory over death because he did. He laid down his life and he took it back up again. He was raised. And so, uh, and then in verse 50, uh, in verse 55 of, of 1 Corinthians 15, it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? So not only do we have a victory over death, but we have victory over the grave as well. The grave couldn't hold. You couldn't even hold the Old Testament saints that were buried. When Jesus died, all those graves burst open. Can you imagine that view? Can you just imagine that? Just think about it. There's, there had to be somebody somewhere getting ready to put some flowers on a grave somewhere, and all the dirt just goes... Boom! Can you imagine that? Wow, you talk about a TikTok video. That would have been a good one to see everybody's faces. You talk about a great video to record and capture the greatest terror of all time on somebody's face, and that would probably that probably get right up there. But um, we have victory over the grave. Where is thy victory? These are questions being asked to death, questions being asked to the grave. Where's your sting, death? Yeah. Grave, where's your victory? You thought you could hold me? Well, guess what? You ain't holding them either. Because he has power over them. He conquered it so that we could. It, that's just awesome. It's awesome to think about. So it's never, it's never a bad thing when somebody goes to heaven because of the fact that, you know, yep, we don't know. The worst part is, and the most terrible thing about anything that we would call death is our separation from that person. 
that's the worst thing because you can't talk. I can't call my uncle on the phone anymore. I can't go over to his house with, you know, a 12-pack of Dr. Pepper and, and some movies to watch because I did that. I didn't drink them all. Don't worry. I was responsible. But I used to go over there all the time and hang out. And I mean, he was not just my uncle. He was my best friend. And that hurts when I can't, you can't call your best friend. You can't see your best friend. I can't make it to where he is right now. But it's even worse for those that have, uh, it's, it's, elite, it's harder on those that have lost spouses. And there's many people in here that have. Because that's a part of you. That, and it makes it that much harder. But the easy part is knowing where they are. Knowing that they're better than they've ever been. They've never, actually never been that good before. Ever. And, and they're with Jesus. And you're going to get to see them again. Because we have that hope. That's what God offers us. Not only just to be with him, but to be with our loved ones that are in him. Okay? Important stuff. There's also victory over hell. I want to read this. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. This is when John is uh, meeting the Lord. He says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He holds the keys. You know why death has no sting? Because Jesus has the key. He's got the key. He's got the keys of hell. I thank God I don't ever have to worry about going there. No, nobody that's accepted Christ as a personal Savior ever has to worry at all. Not even slightly. Not even, even when you're bad or you mess up. You don't even have to worry about it at that point. When you're saved, God, like I said, he's an eternal God. So when he does something, it's forever. You'll find that in Ecclesiastes 3.14. Whatsoever God doeth, it is forever. No man can put anything to it, nor take anything from it. And God doeth it that man should fear before him. So whatever God does, he does it forever. So if he breathes life, it's there forever. If he breathes his word, it's there forever. Okay? And so when he saves you... He does it forever. Amen. Okay, that's what it is. We're not getting to heaven by personal works and merit. We're getting there by Jesus Christ's works, his merit, his righteousness. Because like I said, he did the old switcheroo. He took all my sin and junk and nasty and garbage and gave me all of his righteousness right from the throne of God boom so that when we stand before God the Father it will be as Christ himself is standing before God the Father because what happens what's, what's in comes out right so when, if, if he's in and his righteousness is there his righteousness comes out that's what God sees and recognizes as his own righteousness standing before him Without sin, without fault, without any of that. That's what God offers you. To just believe, trust, accept, and, and, and just give your life to the Lord. Live for Him. Serve Him. Help other people come to this realization as well. It's a very easy thing. Oh, there's nothing. Oh, I've sinned. Oh, I'm just too bad. You don't know the things I've done, preacher. You don't know the thoughts I've thought. You don't know the actions I've done. All I know is that there is not a, a new sin you can come up with that Jesus didn't already cover at the cross. Did you know that? 
The best minds in the world can't put together a new sin that hasn't been covered yet by the blood of Christ. Because <laughs> sin is sin, it's always been there, and he took it all, even before it was made. He took it all, all the sin of the whole world on himself, becoming sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You can't come up with a new sin. God's already forgiven. What about murder? What about this? What about that? It's all covered. It's a bumper-to-bumper -bumper coverage. Yeah? Like that? You like that? Full coverage with no cost. How about that? I, if I, have, I guarantee if I offered full coverage, no cost, it's free to you, come on down, you're completely covered bumper-to-bumper, how many people would be at this altar right now? Every single one. Trampling each other, people slinging others, trying to get out of the way. Right? So you get a full coverage. Policy's already been paid in full. There's nothing you can do, no damage you could do that God hasn't already got covered. Okay? So I'll just put it in, in simple terms we all can know and agree and, and like. Because that's exactly what he did. He did that for us. I'm doing this for you. It's for you. You can put your name there. It's a whosoever kind of thing. It's not, oh, well, just for these people or just for these people. No, whosoever. That's, that's a great thing. You're not excluded. You are included so he holds the keys of death and hell. Then, I want to talk just a second about there's personal victory for me. Now, where does my victory start? How do I start overcoming things? It all starts at the resurrection of Jesus Christ and me, and me being saved. Once I'm saved, I now have access to victory. I now have access to become an overcomer. Because of what Christ did. Because then he gives us the Holy Spirit of God that lives within us and helps us and teaches us, guides us, corrects us when we do wrong. All right? There's victory over the flesh. There's victory in the world. There's victory over tests and trials, temptations. Personal, complete personal victory for me in my life. Now, why if, if I have access to full victory in my life why do i still come up short preacher i'm saved why do i still come up short why am i not getting victory in these areas the the, the areas that we don't get victory in are the areas that we refuse to yield to god those are the areas that we have not submitted to god for correction because we got it we're good no you're not actually Not sorry. <laughs> You're not. You're not good at all. We've got to yield and submit ourselves unto the Lord in those parts that might be hard to let go of. You know, sometimes you might need a little extra encouragement. You know what I love about church? There's encouragement. Because you know what? If I'm down, I could walk up to anybody in this church and I could be like, man, I just got this going on. And you know what I'm going to get? I'm going to get, well, let's pray about it. Let's, let's, it's going to be okay. We're going we're gonna to work through this. God's going to do this. Have you, have you given this part to the Lord? Because you know what? I'm, 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 still, I'm still young by and large. I'm still pretty young. Uh, at least my mind thinks I am. <laughs> but I, I'm, old, I'm, I'm young enough to still appreciate it, old enough to still know that I don't want to hurt myself. So... I'm not writing any checks that my body can't cash and all that. Don't worry, I'm, I'm good there. But, see, there's encouragement there. And we, we have to be that voice, and we have to have that resource. And that's one great thing about being in church is you get that. And I don't get judgment, you know what? And I've literally have gone to people in this church with issues that I've had. And I've never once got any judgment from out of their mouth. Not once. In a Baptist church. 
supposedly the most judgy that there is. Not what I find. That's not what I find. And I'm happy to take the advice. And you know what? I have no problem going to someone that's older than me, that's been down that road, and, and saying, hey, have you ever had this happen or something like it? What did you do? How did you get through it? I have no problem doing that. Because it's good to be around those that have overcome things in their lives. It helps me to know how to overcome too. That's a wonderful thing about church. Everybody's like, oh, but then I gotta set my alarm and I, I gotta get up and I gotta get dressed and uh, I gotta try to find the coffee pot. And, you know, hey, just get here. We got coffee. We got coffee pot. We know how to hit the button. I don't even drink coffee and I can make you coffee. Just get here. Enjoy some fellowship. We'll help you wake up. We'll wake up together. Because usually we all haven't had caffeine. I don't get straight up in head for caffeine. Uh, I, I, I need it by the afternoon, but <laughs> after that. But I mean, you know, you all can wake up together. And that's a cool thing. And you get to talk and you get to have all this good stuff. So that normal and our normal service, our normal breakfast time is, is 9.30. Over here, have coffee, and we'll have some things set out for you to for you to gnaw on, and uh, and uh, some some good stuff over there, and just get a good bunch of fellowship. Wake up, come in here, and learn something. You, you you start with Sunday school, come in and start learning. Stay for the morning service, then come back in Sunday night. You'll learn more. Come on Wednesday at seven. You'll learn more. You're talking four hours out of all the hours you have in a week. And most of them are on Sunday. You only have one hour that's in the middle of the week. And man, you're going to be glad for that hour, let me tell you. The strength. There's been times I just didn't have hardly the strength. And I wondered how I was even going to teach Wednesday night. But then I got in here and then the Lord took over. He strengthened me. He helped me. And then... He helped me with more than just delivering a message. What I, what I, well, some of the things that I say aren't on the outline, folks. <laughs> it just comes out because the Lord does that. He'll fill your mouth on the hour you have need. And sometimes it will shock me what I say. I didn't plan to say that. I didn't plan to use an illustration like that. But man, does that make sense. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping me, for filling my mouth. Let it come from you, not me. Okay? We have victory, all those personal victories. And then we have victory for the church as a whole. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, Then I, I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock... I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's an automatic win. That's an automatic win. And if all the gates of hell won't prevail over the church, that includes all the devils, demons, and everything else that's contrary and that wants to see the church shut. That's an awesome thought. There is, there is that that whole uh, victory for the church. And lastly, you didn't even think I was going to get done yet. And it's only like, man, you might have change if I don't, if I don't slow down a little bit. <laughs> There's victory. This I like this the best. There's victory over Satan. That's the last thing that we'll ever have to worry about. Oh, I cannot wait. Till that happens, I used to I used to really love that that place where uh, it talks about them uh, the grabbing hold of him and locking him in the bottomless pits and, and shut him up. I love that. I highlighted that in my Bible. Finally, somebody's going to shut that little guy up, and he is too. You, you you read Isaiah chapter fourteen, you'll realize that that it's very astounding when they get to see him. This is what 
brought all the trouble to the nations? That? In the middle of torment, in the middle of hell, they stop and, and they wonder at that little thing that's over there on the wall. I like to call that the spotlight in hell. Because the bottomless pit's supposed to be dark, but yet they're seeing him. It's torment, it's filled with flames and torments and other other things that'll be coming out of there later in the in the great tribulation. You got all that stuff in there floating around. There's weeping, gnashing of teeth, all of that stuff. People, I used to preach a message on what's eating you. Yeah, I might have to resurrect that one. It's been a while. A lot of scripture, but man, when you start thinking about all the, all the things that will be biting you and gnawing you, and yeah, it's, you don't want to go there. Let's just, let's just put it there, okay? And we'll commit to pass over that point. But there's victory over Satan. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this is the purpose of the son, the purpose the Son of God was manifested, listen at this, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Destroying the works of the devil. That's what this is about. This is all about that. All right. And then we have 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. In 2 Corinthians 4, 14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Listen, we have victory because he did. That's where it all began. Victory began over everything at the resurrection morning. That's what put the punch in salvation and the power in it. Because had he, like we read in, in, in earlier in the, when we read in our text, had he died on the cross and was buried and stayed there, we would be yet in our sins and our faith would be in vain. Everything would be in vain. And I love even the fact that, that Paul mentioned those that were resting in Jesus would also perish. He didn't leave nobody out. That means everybody that would ever have believed would, would not be, in a, in, there would be no more cure for it. We'd all be doomed. But they're not. And we're not. Because he's not there. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. He will always do what he said. Always. It's all coming to pass. It's all happening and unfolding. We could see, look at your news. You could see the Bible unfolding on, on, your, on your news stations. There's wars, there's rumors of wars, the whole, there's a whole lot of different things. And we could spend time talking about that. But I just want you to understand that you're seeing the Bible come to life. And it's there. Not that it already wasn't alive because it's a living book. Because like I said, it, it is the word. And that's what Jesus is. He is the word. He brought the word, became flesh, and dwelt among us. And the last, uh, the last thing I'll leave with you is John 6.40. Jesus said, and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, meaning him, the Son of God, and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. I want you to think about that. As I don't know no better scripture to leave you with than that one right there. If you believe on him, you'll have everlasting life. And Jesus said, I will raise him up 
at the last day. When he comes back, all those graves are going to burst open again. I guarantee they're going to, they're already prepping it, that they will, they will be blaming the massive missing people from the rapture that will happen. They're already planning on blaming aliens. As a matter of fact, there was a, I can't think of the news station, but when I heard it the first time, I thought, what? It was supposed to be a reputable, um, pretty, pretty reputable news station <laughs> providing proof of alien existence. I thought, did the editor of that news station come from the National Enquirer? I'm not sure about that. But we already know that there'll be many, many excuses because there'll be two working in a field. One will be taken. One will be left behind. Two grinding at the mill. One will be taken. One will be left behind. And there's no, there's no way once Jesus comes that you can be saved after that if you've heard the gospel before. No way. you got to do it and get it right. Get it done. Get it settled before that happens. And that's why we, that's why we preach the way that we do. That's why we let you know that the time is approaching when he will come. We've stopped looking for signs. We're just listening for the trumpet now. Because it's all adding up. It's all coming, coming to a point, coming to a head. It's, it's all right there. And the main thing for anybody is to make sure you are ready. Because that's not something you want to miss. Well, you know, I'll just, I'll wait till I'm 90 years old and I got one foot on a banana peel and the other on a grave and then I'll think about doing something with my soul. You may not have that long. You may not have that long. I want you to understand that God said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. He's only obligated to knock once. All it takes is one refusal. He doesn't have to anymore after that. He's met his obligation. And it's already built into everybody, even the eternal Godhead. It's already built into every person. They won't stand, they'll stand without excuse. Romans chapter 1, I believe uh, verses 18 through 20. Check that out. Listen, we're not promised a tomorrow. We don't know that we'll make it to another sunrise. We're not promised one. If we do, that's why you thank God for every day you have. Don't waste it. Be ready. If you've never, if you're here and you've never had a time in your life that you knew you were a sinner and, and, and you need a savior and you've got... You've asked the Lord to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins. You believed on him. You confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He says, thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you've not done that, this would be the greatest day for you to do that. On Resurrection Morning. Resurrection Sunday. So if there's anyone here who's Who's got doubts? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Man, I think I would. Listen, if you have to say, oh, I think, I think, or if you have to try to justify it or excuse it, well, I've been a good person, and, you know, I, 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 I support the cats and dogs, and I support all these things, and I give to feed the children, and I do, and I'm good about this and that, and you know, and I, I'll give somebody to ride if they need one. I'll give some of the shirt off my back if they don't have. I mean, none of those, those th are all great things. None of that will get you to heaven. Even saying stuff like, I've been a church member for 50 years in this place. That don't guarantee you be in heaven. Only thing that guarantees is doing what God says, not what you want. 
So we just have to bow our will to his and accept it. So easy. And if you're in here and you're not sure, or you have to do all those little excuses, just, just count it as a no. <laughs> because God made it easy. He made it easy. Not even a fool could err to the way of salvation. God made it that way on purpose. So let's come for the invitation at this time.